Hey, welcome to the last section in this unit, 6.4, fitting a line to data. All right. Uh, today's target, I can fit a line to a set of data. We're going to be dealing with scatter plots today. Now, what a scatter plot is, is it's a graph. So it's a graph of pairs of numbers. that represent a real life situation. So that represent a real life situation. So it's going to kind of feel like a lot of today is like almost all uh, application problems because for the most part that's really what we're looking at our applications of plotting points in a Cartesian plane. All right, we're going to look at correlation to start off with. And we have three types of correlation, but what correlation is, is it's just the, uh, the relationship of a set of data. And we can have arguments going back and forth, whether it's data, data, whatever. Okay. So we're going to look at the relationship between that, that set of data. And it's fairly simple to look at correlation. Um, it, it, some people have a little bit of a hard time with it when you're kind of splitting hairs on whether it's one thing or another. But for the, the basics of it, if the overall set of data seems to go upwards from left to right, Okay, we always read from left to right. Okay, and if it looks like it goes upwards, we call that positive. If it goes downwards, we call it negative. And if there's kind of no, you know, general idea of what, I mean, they just seem, you know, as the name suggests, totally scattered, uh, then we call it, they say relatively no correlation. I just kind of go with no correlation. Um, you know, relatively no correlation means that, well, just in that picture it doesn't, but maybe if you zoomed way out, you know, and there are more points up here, okay, and, you know, some points up here, and then some points down in this region, okay, you might be able to say that that has positive correlation, but from what you've seen, there's no correlation. I can just live with the no correlation instead of relatively no correlation. All right. So really what we're looking at here is we're looking at the slope of the imaginary line that we've made. Okay, this blue line usually isn't there when you're just looking at a set of data. It looks more like this. Uh, maybe they're all sort of in a line, but they usually don't have a line that comes with it. All right. So kind of like these two down below. Let's go ahead and look at these and describe the correlation of the set of data. So if you were looking at these points and you know you kind of squint your eyes and it doesn't look like a set of points it looks more like a line okay what kind of slope would that have would it have positive negative or is there no real comparison in between them looking at this first one i would say that it has a positive it sort of goes up this way okay so it has a positive correlation you're going to be asked a bunch of problems today where all you have to write is positive, negative, or no correlation. That's pretty awesome. We're not going to be doing a bunch of math on these. This one here, I would say, kind of goes down, so it has a negative correlation. So that one's positive, that one's negative. Pretty simple, huh? We're breezing right through this first page. All right, the main part of today, though, is about best fitting lines. Okay, best fitting lines, the definition is a line, uh, believe that or not, it's a line, okay, a line that most closely most closely resembles the trend of the data, of the data, data, who cares, that most closely resembles the trend of the data. 
come to data. Okay. So the the line that most closely resembles the trend of the data. Uh, a lot of times you might even hear these called trend lines as opposed to best fitting lines. But either way, uh, whatever name you use for them, it doesn't really matter. So this line on this graph would be the best fitting line. You may even hear me just call it the line of best fit. Any of those names really mean the same thing. You know, we in math, we have so many strict rules, uh, but a lot of times with names like these, we can't come up with one thing that we like the best. All right. So let's go ahead and turn the page and move on. Let's look at the, the bulk of what we're going to be doing. So this is where it really gets tricky. So here we have how to approximate a line of best fit. And you're going to want to pay attention to this because this is really tough stuff. Um, the table shows forearm lengths and foot lengths without shoes of 18 students in one of Mr. Gull's classes. Okay, I did this research a while ago. Um, and it says after graphing the point. Well, dang it, that's already done. So we already have the all the points graphed. These are the points over here. Um, you can definitely look at those if you want to, and we're actually going to use some of those at one point. Um, but let's go ahead and see what we have here. I want to uh, draw the line that, that most closely resembles the trend of the data. So I want to draw a best fit line, and I want to write the equation of that line. All right. So let's look more closely. Let's kind of ignore this set of data right now because we already have it graphed. All right. So what we're doing here is all I, want, all I really want to do is I want to draw a line that, you know, the, the idea of a best fit line or a line of best fit or a trend line is that the number of points over the line and the number of points under the line are equal. All right. That would be a true best fitting line. So if you were to do this from scratch, you'd be faced with a bunch of different uh, complications like, getting appropriate graph paper, plotting the points correctly. Um, but most of that's done for us already. Now, here are some things that I always do uh, when, I'm, when I'm coming up with a line of best fit. And I'm going to zoom back out and put some notes on here. So <clears throat> the first big thing is always pick two points that you're given to draw the line. All right. Always pick two points that you're given to draw the line. Here I've already picked them. I've picked 1920 and 2626. Usually, you know, the two points that you're going to find are somewhere near the bottom and somewhere near the top. Okay. But those are the two points that I've picked. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily the right two, but they're the two that I think fit the data the most. And sometimes, you know, I don't have one on me, but uh, sometimes I'll take like a piece of string or something that I can see both sides on, maybe a, a see-through ruler. Um, I'm going to do my best with this piece of paper here. And I kind of just test some things out. So let's say, you know, let's say I thought it went through this top point and this very bottom point. So let's see what happens when I line those two up. If you notice, I have a lot more points on top than on bottom. So that wouldn't be a best fit. Okay, maybe if I stretch it over a little bit. Now I'm looking a little bit better. And that's why I picked the point 1920 and 2626. So... You know, I, I might use things like a see-through ruler. Obviously, I don't have one. You've seen mine. It's solid red. Or a, uh, you know, I've seen people use like a piece of string or anything that, that you can see both sides of. The piece of paper works okay. It's not great, though. So I, I'm kind of trying to swing that point, that paper around until I really find what I think is the best fitting line. And that's why I chose those two points already. But I want to focus on the equation part of that. 
But like I said, I always pick two points that I'm given, and I know the coordinates to. All right? And that we'll see why in a little bit. Um, and, and we're going to use those two points. Use those points to find the equation. So even though I'm given this whole table, I'll come back to this in a second. Even though I'm given this whole table, I'm only going to be using two of those points. All right? I'm not going to use any of those other points to find the equation on my line. They all go into putting them on the graph, putting them on the scatter plot, and they go into, you know, finding what the best fit line would be, but they do not help me as much in my equation as just the two points that I've picked. So I'm going to pick, I pick those two points, I'm going to draw that line that connects those two points, and I'm going to keep it going a little bit. Okay, so I have those two points, and bam. All right, I'm saying my line of best fit is right there, and it looks pretty good. I mean, like we showed, like we saw with the paper, um, it really seems to have the same amount of points above and below. Maybe a few more points below. Maybe I could have picked this one, or maybe if my line was straight, it would actually go through that one. Uh, I think it'd be pretty close. Maybe not though, but that's the line that I'm going to use. And now I'm going to find the equation of that line. And we've done that quite a bit this sec in this unit. Um, this is just finding the equation of a line given two points. So step one, you may remember, find slope. Step two, write equation. Okay, and we have multiple different ways that we can write that equation. Um, and I'm either going to tell you, if you remember last section, we're either going to put those two points into the slope-intercept form and solve for B, or we're going to put that point, or pick one point and put it in as the uh, point in point-slope form. So let's find the slope first. <coughs> Hopefully you remember that slope equals x or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to use this as my ones, and this is my twos. Okay, so I have 26 minus 20 over 26 minus 19. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have 26 minus 20, that's going to be 6. 26 minus 19 is 7. So my slope is 6 sevenths. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and look at, I'm going to use the, uh, the point slope form, and I'm going to use this point 19, 20 as my point. So I have my slope. So remember, it's y minus the y coordinate, 20, equals the slope, 6 sevenths x minus the x coordinate which is 19. All right this is going to get a little difficult because I do have a fraction and I do have some pretty big numbers from what I'm used to uh, but that doesn't mean that it won't work. I'm going to start off by distributing y minus 20 equals 6 sevenths x minus I'm going to leave this in improper fraction form I think it'll be easier, but I am going to grab a calculator. All right. Um, so let's see. What do we need? I need six seven. So I'll go six divided by seven and hit enter. That'll give me an ugly decimal. Or no, I don't want to do that. Sorry. I wanted to stay in improper fraction form. So I'm going to go six times nineteen, and that's one fourteen. And so I have 114 over 7. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to add 20 to both sides. Okay, I can do that. Those go away. I have y equals 6 sevenths x. And all I have to do is add these two numbers. Let's go over here and think about it a little bit. 
So 114 over 7. And what's 20 in sevenths? Well, it's going to be 20 times 7 over 7. So 140 over 7. And that's, sorry, that's a negative 114. And then I'll add 140 over 7. So I have common, common denominators, which is awesome. I want to go negative 114 plus 140. And I'm left with 26. And that's 26 over 7. So I'm going to bring that. That's my, my y-intercept. I'm going to bring that down here and write it as plus 26 over 7. Okay? That's my equation of that line. I want to check to see if it makes sense. So I'm going to do that real quick. Now, it might help to know what 26 over 7 is at this point. So I'm going to go 26 divided by 7. And it's 3.71. Uh, 3 okay. If I would have drawn this line a little bit better, you can't even see it yet. If I would have drawn this line a little bit better, see how I missed this point on the top half? If it was on the bottom half of that, it probably would have made it down into this region, okay, where the graph is kind of broken. All right, so that tells me that the graph went and took a jump, all right. One square up here, so this is 18, that's 19 and 20, all right. So they went one square for 18, and then they went one square, meaning one from then on. So this little break here, this little squiggly line, means that the graph jumped. So it would land somewhere in this jumped part of the graph if it was drawn correctly, if I would have hit that point. So that makes sense on that. And let's just see, do I really go up 6 and over 7 from this point to this point? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I do. Okay, so my slope's right. I'm guessing that my... Uh, that my y-intercept's correct. So I'm going to say that the equation of that line, I'm going to write it on the graph. It's always good to say that your equation is y equals 6 sevenths x plus 26 over 7. All right? Even if it's hard to read sometimes, it's always good to have it on there. All right? So go ahead and summarize the notes. Good luck on the practice application and mastery challenge. If you need more help with this, feel free to ask me. There were things that we just couldn't get to in the video uh, because I just wanted to make sure that we could find the equation. You will be guessing or using your equation to estimate numbers that happen outside and inside of your data set. And I don't want you to get scared by that. So if you need help with that, feel free to ask me. And you can check the solutions online also to the practice. Good luck. We'll see you later. All right, in our quest for the top t top four TV math fails, we had Family Guy math. Who wants to be a millionaire? The, uh, I'm not going to say outdated, but Abbott and Costello, two tens for a five clip. And last but not least, number one, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Okay, so see if you can spot the mistake before, you know, before the, the punchline is, is thrown out there. Enjoy. Pick another subject and let's go for 2,000. All right. Let's go with uh, second grade measurement. Second grade measurement. <laughs> Jennifer, the $2,000 question is, if Jacob stands on Spencer's shoulders, they are two and a half yards high, how many feet is that? Jacob stands on Spencer's shoulder. They are two and a half yards high. How many feet is that? Okay. Do you want me to have Jacob and Spencer do this? I yes, mean, that'll help. Please. Uh, two and a half yards, so. Marky has locked in her answer. What are you thinking, Jennifer? Well, I'm thinking, uh, I want to just say the length of a football field and be done with it. <laughs> That's some tall boys. Well, it's like five, th it's 52, 89 feet in the yard or something like that. I could be way off. Um, 
two and a half yards. <laughs> and I, I took a chemistry class too, and that was one of the. So you learned tutor, this in chemistry class. Yeah, my tutor is gonna kill me now. Where did you go to school? TCC. In Texas, TCC. Let's see. Um, Sounds like you were homeschooled and you were there by yourself. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna walk in a peak. I'm gonna walk in a peak. <laughs> okay. You want a peak? If Jacob stands on Spencer's shoulders, they are two and a half yards high. How many feet is that? Your classmate Marky said. 78. feet in a yard. So what do you think? Um, you can go with Marky's answer, you can go with your answer. I'm going with your answer. You want to lock that in? decided to go with her answer, which was 78. 78. The basic question here really is how many feet are in, are in two and a half yards? Right. How many feet are in one yard seems to be the big stumbling block. <laughs> Does three ring any kind of a bell? You, yeah. you had 352, which is close to the days in a year. And you had 52, which were weeks in a year. And I know it's a chemistry problem. Two and a half yards. If there's three feet in a yard, two yards is six feet. Half a yard is one and a half feet, which makes seven and a half feet. I am sorry, Jennifer. Seven and a half is the correct answer. And you're leaving here with nothing. And I want everybody to win a million dollars, but I got to tell you, that was the most entertaining zero <laughs> we have ever had. Will you do me a favor? Will you look at the camera and tell the world? My name is Jennifer, and I learned something. I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.